It's easier than ever to upgrade a Game Boy Advance SP. I'm going to show you how. Hi, welcome back to the shed. Exciting news. Um, I've put an article together for Nintendo Life website uh, about how to install one of these amazing IPS screens inside a Game Boy Advance SP. So while I was going through the process and I was taking pictures as I went along, I thought I'd do a little companion piece video to go with it as well. So I know I've covered these before, um, but I've done one with a whole brand new shell and we looked at putting the hinges and so on in. This one's slightly different. This one's about installing a screen in an existing Game Boy and keeping that original shell intact. So slightly different. Uh, and the thrust of this one, because I know what I'm doing with these now, is very much in terms of a tutorial. It's me showing you how to do it and it is so easy compared to how it used to be uh, with modding screens in these things. This is one of the best modifications out there for doing on a Game Boy. It's so satisfying, it's pretty straightforward and I'm going to show you how to do it. So this is what we're going to be modifying. It's a Zelda Edition Gold Game Boy Advance SP. The addition is the AGS-001, which means the screen is lit, um, but it's front lit. There's a little button here that can turn the light on or off, um, but really it doesn't provide a huge amount of visibility, as you can see here. So what we're going to do is swap this screen out and replace it with one of these IPS kits, which I've got here. We'll open that up in a little bit. So onto the tools we're going to need. Your kit may well come with two screwdrivers, which will do the job if you are careful, but the metal on those does tend to be quite soft, so be careful you don't shear anything off. In this case, uh, my own tri-wing and crosshead screwdriver are going to be used, so I'm going to pop these to one side. We are going to need to cut a little bit of the casing inside the top half of the shell to accommodate the new screen. To do that, you could use a Dremel. In this case, we're going to use these cutters. They're referred to as side cutters or flush cutters because there's a flat side there. Craft knife in this case. Uh, I've got a scalpel because the sharp point is going to come in really handy when it comes to carefully removing these little inserts. If you're putting on a new shell, that's not going to be a problem. You can dig those out. But if you're going to be keeping the existing shell like we're doing here, you need to be very, very careful of these points when you're trying to lift those out. So the sharper a point you've got, the more likely it is you can get in around the edge. Also, I've got some tweezers for when there's particularly fiddly jobs and my fat fingers can't get in those gaps. And a microfiber cloth too, uh, just for cleaning anything up or resting on soft surfaces. Scissors can come in handy. You can install uh, an additional wire which requires soldering, which means that when you press this button, you can cycle through different levels of brightness. So let's look at the kit you'd need for that. All right, so soldering equipment. If you're new to soldering, try soldering on something else, practice on something else first before you go for this. But in this case, all we're going to be doing is soldering. You can see this red wire through the packet. We'll be soldering that to a point on the ribbon, which comes with the kit and a point on the motherboard of the Game Boy Advance. So just two solder jobs. So basic soldering skills will be fine for doing this. And I'll talk you through it later in the video. Uh, in terms of the equipment you need, a low wattage soldering iron is ideal. Um, this one I use is an Antex CS18. It's an 18 watt soldering iron. Uh, anything below 20 watts should be fine. And you could do with a stand for that just for safety. I've got a sponge in the bottom that's wet just to help wipe off the solder. And my soldering iron sits in there. In addition to that, you will need um, possibly wire strippers. Uh, the wire's already prepared at both ends, but it's quite long, so you might need to cut that down to size, so the wire strippers will be handy with that. Of course, you will need some solder. Uh, if you want the solder to flow a bit more, you could use flux, uh, which you can get in a bottle like this, um, or you can use a flux pen like this to just draw on the two points. You can solder without flux. Um, what it does, it just helps the solder flow, so it makes the job a little easier. Uh, also, I've got a solder sucker or a desoldering pump, um, which will just create a vacuum when you push the button and suck up any solder if you make any mistakes. So again, that's not essential, but it's quite handy to have. And again, a pair of tweezers just for any fiddly jobs and avoid burning your fingers. So that's for the brightness control. You can do the whole mod without that if you want to just install the screen. Um, but if you can solder or if you want to have a go at soldering, it is worth doing. So our first job is opening up the console. You've got some screws that are easy to get to, 
which are on the back. You've got one, two, three, four, five there, plus one inside the battery compartment, plus a crosshead screw on the battery compartment itself. And then in the top half, you've got these five screws, which are hidden beneath these little pads. Um, so what we'll do is we'll start with the main shell. When you're putting this down, you don't want to damage the surface on there, so make sure your surface that you're resting on is completely clear. Uh, the microfiber cloth is quite handy for that. I'm leaning on a silicon soldering mat here, which is a good surface for working on and keeping things in place. So once those are out, the back will just lift off. The L and R buttons will stay in place, so we'll leave well alone with those, and that can just go to one side for now. The next job is to remove this motherboard so that we can take out the old screen. The power switch uh, should be able to just lift out there and put that to one side. Um, for the actual motherboard, you've got one, two, three crosshead screws. So you undo those and then very, very carefully lift because that's where the ribbon cable for the screen is attached on the underside. The board lifts up and over and then you can see here where the ribbon cable is attached. What I'm going to need to do is I'll move all the buttons out of the way. And then here where the ribbons attached is two points that need lifting up. So you can use a spudger or a fingernail just to lift that up there and there. And you should be able to just lift the ribbon out like that. And you've got your two separate parts. Right, so once the motherboard's out of the way, we've got one more screw before we move on to these five on the top and that's holding this cap in place on the hinged area that just sits on top and it's held in place by a screw that you may not notice at first but underneath the ribbon there's a crosshead screw here so we'll take that out it's quite a long screw this one so it can reach all the way through so it's an easy one to spot but you don't want to end up putting that in any other places later it might cause you problems and then we'll remove that little cap. So that exposes this part here where the ribbon feeds through and also exposes the insides of the hinges if you're needing to remove those. In this case, we're not doing that. We're going to keep the original hinge in place. So if we open up, our next job is to be able to access the screen itself, which involves removing this flap on top um, which is accessed by removing the five screws that are under these little rubber points. Now they are soft and they can be levered out, but you need to be really, really careful when you're doing it. So as I mentioned, um, something like a sharp knife, like the point of this scalpel blade here, uh, will be sufficient to just get in at the side and flip those out. So I'll do it with just this central one first. Try and pick a point where you can see a little bit of a gap and then just put the point in there. Try and not to cut the rubber and then you can dig it in from underneath and lift and just take it slow and it should just lift up and lever off. You can have another tool to help. So if for instance, say I've got a, a spudger with a point on it and then I can just lever up with the knife and then dig the spudger into the gap and hold it in place. So that can then push in and, and lift off the point where I want to. And I'm just going to very, very carefully remove all of those. It is okay to dig the knife in very slightly underneath to get some leverage. Uh, the main thing is that the top area doesn't get any cuts in it. So that's all five of those out, which exposes our five screws. These, keep them to one side and keep them sticky side up so they don't pick up any dust or dirt because we'll be putting those back in place later. And now we've got these five screws to undo. So I'll turn it that way up so that this isn't in the way. Uh, these are tri-wing screws, so we'll take those out. So once those screws are out, we can start to disassemble this. Easiest way to do it 
is carefully hold those two bits together and close up the hinge mechanism. You can then remove this entire top piece. It should just lift straight off. This is what's going to require some cutting, so we'll keep that handy. And we kind of remove our original screen. And if you've already removed this cap like I've done, it's a case of just feeding it through this slot like that. And then the screen will just drop straight out because it's a whole assembled unit like that with the lens on top of the screen. Okay. So that is fine as it is. It's this that we need to look at next and do some cutting. It's time to take a look at our kit. Carefully remove everything we've got. So there's the red wire, a bit of double sided tape. There's a bit of foam which has got stuck. Oh dear. That's got stuck to my screen there. I'm going to need to remove that. It's not the end of the world, but it is a little bit annoying. Don't go too harsh on that because you don't want to go scratching off the paint that is on the underside of the screen. So we've got the screen unit with the lens already attached, which is great because it means we won't get any dust in between the gaps. That is our connector. So the ribbon connects to the motherboard of the Game Boy and this control board uh, has a connector there which connects up to this. Now when that's all in place you'll notice that the screen is over to the side slightly and where it fits into our housing. Well it fits fine into that half or it should just pop in there. Over at this side the control board which is going to sit here fits right up to the edge there and what that means is that where this would normally close on there this part of the plastic is going to get in the way what I need to do is remove this rail here and then also a little bit along the edge here for where this ribbon connects because it sticks out a tiny little bit uh, if you've got a clear shell you've got to be really careful to get that neat with a solid color shell it's not too bad. Insulating film because the entire back surface of the screen is metal and the ribbon that attaches to it is all metal on there as well so it just kind of insulates that stops it from touching any metal parts inside. We are going to look at how this is going to sit in place so it will be here and for the thick edge of the screen to fit in place that whole rail is going to need to go so it'll sit neatly and securely in place. Right, so what we're going to need to do first of all is remove that entire rail um, from all the way up at the top to just shy of the bottom down there. Double check that you're cutting the right side, that you've got everything the right way up. So I always find it's easier rather than looking at the other part is look at this, think of the lid lifting up and where your screen's in place, that your screen's the right way up. It sits flat on that side, so that's fine. So it's the left side that we're going to need to cut and remove. And to do that, I'm going to use the side cutters. Try and dig in and remove little bits. Eye protection's good if you're doing this. Um, but you just cut down and down to cut little triangles out. And then eventually you can level it off. When you get nearer the bottom, it's easier to use the craft knife just to shave those down. Also, it's attached at these side bits here, so those will need cutting out. So that's just what I'm going to be doing next. On the microfiber cloth here, just so I don't scratch the surface. You see I've been cutting bits in and levelling off with the knife and then where the bumps are left with the gaps I'll cut those with the cutters. So 
most of those bits are cut out now, I just need to level it off with the craft knife. Make sure if you get any debris, move it off your microfiber cloth because you don't want it scratching the top of the unit. Cut out that entire rail like it was like that on the other side, and that's now being cut out, smoothed out, and removed. Tell you what, now's probably a good time to sort out the back with the ribbon in place and this insulating film. So that'll just peel back off there, and we'll sit and cover the back of the screen, particularly this corner because that's where that ribbon's going to go. Let it drop on there, smooth out from the centre. Next we've got this tiny connector here, connecting up to this tab. So they will connect that way. You'll feel a little click between the two once they're in place. And then that will flip over. So you need to get this ribbon very carefully out of the way because that comes up and over. I find if you loop the ribbon around and then flip it, it tends to behave. So this is where our double sided tape comes in. Um, don't need to use all of it, just a little bit in the middle of the, the screen there. So cut that in half. Peel it on one side. Put the sticky bit down here, like that. I'll be able to lift and remove that. Well, you've got that sticky bit there. Just carefully align your control board. It will overlap slightly at this edge, but it should be okay. So that'll sit flat there. Right now I've done these before where the screen's just dropped straight into that section but this will push in but it gives a little bit of resistance. Now on the inside edge here there's like two little bumps there and there. What I'm going to do is remove those so the screen just drops in that bit more neatly. I'll do that with the craft knife. As I say I've done this before with various Game Boys and it's just dropped straight in so I don't know whether it's the kit or this shell but either way it's it's easy enough to trim. Just brush those bits out of the way. Still a little bit of a bump there but hopefully the screen will fit now with the ribbon towards the hinge. Ah, that drops in fine now, it sits in no problem and it's not wobbling or moving around so if you've got one and it's too tight a fit just trim those little bits out and the screen should drop straight in. You want a relatively snug fit so don't remove it if you don't have to. Where this comes to the edge you'll need to remove or trim a little bit just so that it doesn't cause any undue pressure on that which I think is what we're going to have to do. Um, so we'll see how that fits. So that'll sit on top there, no problem. Grips in place, but around here, you can see that. So next our ribbon, which will loop up and over itself once. And then this end will feed through that little slot like that. Bring that all the way through very, very carefully. And then try and even out that loop, make sure it's not under any excess pressure. Now before you even put the lid on, now is quite a good time to mount this cap. So that just sits there. Now to save your screen dropping out, it's quite a good idea to 
pop this on and just hold it in place. So just hold it all gently together, holding the top and the cap and turn it over like that. And then you can get your screw. Remember it's that long one. Cross head. Sit it in there. Screw it in. When you're putting any screws back in, turn them anti-clockwise first. So you feel a little pop. And then you can screw it back in and it'll sit on the original thread instead of stripping it all. What you could do from here is put all your buttons straight back in uh, and your speaker, get your motherboard, reconnect your ribbon to there, put it back together and it'll work. It'll basically just work on full brightness. But what we're going to do is attach a wire to a point on the motherboard which is marked Q12B. So what we need to do next is treat those with a little bit of solder. I can get to that point quite easily. I can get to that point there. So I'll just slosh on a bit of flux here and a bit there. That'll just make it easier when I'm soldering. Just melt a little bit of solder onto that point there. So you just heat it and melt a bit on. And there, heat the point have a little solder on, leave it there and let it spread. My wire, this wire here, is going to go all the way around from there to Q12B. So you can see that's a really, really long wire. I'm going to actually cut it a bit shorter. In fact, I've got a length of red wire of my own here that I'm going to use. Got a little bit of solder on the end already. So it's going to go from here. And it's just going to simply root around to that point. So it only needs to be that long. Didn't need to be as long as the one that came with it. So I'll cut that and you can use wire strippers to just strip the end. Or in my case, because it's quite soft wire, I can just use my finger and thumb now. Get some solder and just tin the end. So tinning is just where you are using your soldering iron to melt a little bit of solder there because when I'm doing this I won't be able to hold the wire and the soldering iron and some solder all in the same spot so if I prepare this wire and I've already prepared the other bits what I'm doing is I'm taking like one bit of solder and another bit of solder laying one over the other and reheat and then they'll kind of merge and join and give a really strong join so that's the method that I'm going to be using I think that needs cut into size just a little bit. So the wire strippers are side cutters just to trim that. Then I am going to attach my wire. So I've already soldered that on there. I'm going to just, with it poking out to the side, line it up in place, reheat, move the iron away and let it cool, and then Oh, do I put the ribbon in and then solder? I'll put the ribbon under a bit of strain. So I think what I'll do next is I'm going to solder that wire to Q12B. So I'll just get it pointing in that direction. And we heat something walking on my shed roof there. That seems to be a little bit high up. So I'm just going to reheat that since it's flat that's better so what i've got there is my wire in place and attached to there so that's that's basically it for my brightness control so if you extend the ribbon a bit you'll be able to get that in round from there and in place needs to go clear of this bit and then down to that point there what i'm going to do just to stop that moving round is get a tiny little bit of tape just to secure it. I'm using Kapton tape but any tape will do really as long as it's just a tiny bit. There we go. So I'll just lift that so you can see before I put it back together. I've got the Kapton tape just to keep that in place so the wire is clear of the area where the AB buttons go, it's clear of the bit where the brightness control go, everything's alright to go together. So next I need to get all my buttons and speaker and everything else in place.
and the board will just sit flat on there. Shouldn't pose any problems. And to save anything from dropping out, now is a good time to put those three screws back in place. Back half to go back on now, but don't forget your power switch. There should be a volume slider already attached on the motherboard. So that goes in there, like that. Right, I have no idea where the camera cut out, but I peeled off the front of the uh, film of the LCD. And I've just put a little bit of the remaining double-sided tape on the back of the screen so I can put the foam on. But I'm not going to put the entire foam on. I've found that puts too much pressure and it all starts bulging up, particularly around this point, which doesn't look good. So I'm going to use the scissors to cut just a little bit of the foam. Literally just a small section to keep the screen from moving around like that. That's fine. Okay. I'll peel off my double sided tape, pop the foam in place there, like that, and then put my lid on, which should fit neatly, easily, all the way around. So, before I put the screws in, I'll do a quick test. I've got two screws holding the bottom together, the battery's in. There we go. And I can press on the brightness button to cycle through the different brightnesses. That's all fine. Yeah. That's really good. So I'll switch off and I'll put those screws in place. And we'll put the little bits back in place. I'll just push in and stick. Dead easy. Another test, just in case, just for fun. And then I've got my remaining screws. And we're done. So that's it really. Um, it's quite an easy process, even the soldering. The soldering is pretty straightforward. If you can't already solder, it's worth learning. Um, I'll do a video with some tips soon, I promise. Um, but yeah, it's worth doing. The only difficult part, I would say, or challenging part, is trimming away the bits of the shell at the top, particularly if you've got a clear shell. Um, but take your time with that. Um, it's, it's not a problem at all. It's just time consuming more than anything and do watch your fingers when you're using the knife. Always point the blade away. Compared to the original screen in an AGS 001, this is just light years ahead. It's amazing. So for the amount of effort it takes to trim out the excess and carefully do the modification, I'd say it's worth your while. So give it a go. So if you follow this guide and you try it out, let me know how you get on. If I've missed anything out in my guide and you've got any questions, ask in the comments. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed it. So I'll leave a link in the description for the finished written article, which you'll be able to see on Nintendo Life website. And um, good luck if you're going to be giving it a try. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more like this. And I will see you next time. Cheers. Mm -hmm.